One of the biggest problems to strategists is that they don't get enough chances to practice the skill set of strategy. In this video, I'm going to share with you a strategy exercise to help you improve your strategy skills. But first, let me tell you why practice is so important for strategy. A lack of practice nearly got me kicked off the PlayStation pitch at 2am the night before the biggest pitch of my life. I had made it onto the final team who flew out to San Francisco to pitch to PlayStation. We'd gone through the final run through of the pitch. The nerves were getting to me and I kept messing up my strategy slides. The CEO and CCO came over to me and said they were going to cut me from the team because I hadn't had enough practice pitching strategy to clients. I was devastated. I told them that I would stay up all night and get this perfect and I realized in that moment we are expected to be perfect but we never practice our craft. They gave me a chance and I ended up making the team and we won the pitch and I made some of the best work of my life. Practice has not only helped me but it's helped members of the academy too. For the last three years I've noticed the strategists who practice are the ones who have transitioned into world-class strategists. A great example of this is academy member who went from an account manager to a strategist, Tyler Koch. He practiced retrofitting strategies for iconic campaigns. You can check out the one he did for IKEA here. That is why I created this guide of 10 exercises that every strategist should practice. The following are just five of those exercises you can practice either by yourself or in a group. The five exercises are word golf, Warhol's words, ladder builders, brief surgery, opening moves, and all test a different skill set within strategy. It's an exercise where you're trying to use as few words as possible to make a strategy. One of the most important skills for strategist is to be brief. We need to be very conscious of how many words we use as we are trying to keep the attention of our audience. This exercise demands that you reduce the word count without reducing the meaning. You firstly reveal a paragraph that has been written. This could come from a deck or an email you have written that week, or you could take from a collection of paragraphs that need to be shortened. You create par by working out how many words you could rewrite it in. E.g. when you rewrote the sentence, it was 30 words instead of 50 words. That then becomes your golfing par. You then put 30 seconds on the clock and the strategist have to rewrite the sentence with the least words possible. At the end of the 30 seconds, the strategists respond back with their sentences and word count. Step four, you have to decide whether the sentence makes sense and then how many words above or below par they are. E.g. someone with 27 words would be three under par. 35 words would be five plus. At the end of nine exercises, the person with the lowest score is the winner. Each round takes around two minutes for two people. Nine holes of word golf will take you about 20 minutes. You never need to write prepositions of I, we, or you. You never need to use the word just. Hole one, word count 43 and par is 26. After the launch of Ticketmaster Connect back in December 2021, our ticket trajectory was not met. We're competing against a serious local ticket hawker, SLTH, that only operates in local areas. SLTH currently does 400,000 tickets a week while we do 15,000 tickets a week. So pause the video and try to rewrite it. Launching in December 2021, Ticketmaster Connect ticket trajectory has not been met currently. 15,000 tickets per week. Competition Serious Local Ticket Hawkers does 400,000 tickets a week. So in this one, the count is 26 words. So my score would be zero as the par is 26. This is a game to see who can make the most memorable strategy. The tools you have at your hands is the ability to paint words. There are two types of words in the world, visual words, which have an image attached to them and verbal words, which don't have any image attached. This game needs to be played in groups of three or more. Making a strategy that sticks in people's mind is essential to the job. One of the best ways of doing that 
is using visual words which paint pictures in people's brains. Come up with a list of one sentence strategy statements that you're trying to get across. This can come from you or you can use this list attached. Step two, you then put one minute on the clock and the strategist have to rewrite the statement using visual words or an analogy to make it more memorable. Step three, you give all the answers back to the leader and they read out the answers. Step four, the group then votes on which answer they think is the best. Step five, everyone's vote is a point towards that strategist. Step six, the first strategist to 10 points wins. Alliteration, analogy and picturing words is what's gonna make the difference here. 20 to 40 minutes, depending on how many strategists you have. Certain songs can become positive emotional touch points for fans of their favorite football team. Answer. Every club has their pitch perfect songs. Songs are the 12th player of a team. Lead singers are now your new lead strikers. Kicking goals with sounds. Soccer songbirds, every club has their iconic song. You would vote for the statement that best encapsulates the spirit of the original statement. The complement of alcohol and caffeine that is achieved in an espresso martini creates the ideal state for consumers on a night out. Now think of how you can make that more visual. Pause the video. Here's some answers. Shaken and stirred, the mix of caffeine and alcohol. Head racer, body chaser, the mix of caffeine and alcohol. Or cocktail of moods. You would then vote for the statement that you think best encapsulates the spirit of the original statement. It's an exercise where you put together the rungs of the benefit ladder. Starting with the top rung, the emotional benefit, or the bottom rung, the product or service, and you then have limited time to try and fill out as many ladder rungs as possible. Ladder Builders gets you comfortable with using the benefits ladder and helps you to get comfortable with emotional benefits without the pressure of a real brief. Practicing ladders helps to show that there is not one answer to a benefit ladder. The benefit ladder is used to help come up with the creative brief and strategy on a page and consumer goals. It also helps you to create the messages for the different levels of the communications framework. Start with either the product or service at the bottom of the ladder or the emotional benefit or brand tagline at the top of the ladder. Step two, then it is the job of the strategist to come up with three different ladders filled out with the product or service, the features, functional benefits, and emotional benefits for that product. You have five minutes to write out as many benefit ladders as you can. Step three, pass the ladder to a partner and then give each other points on how many filled out ladders you can create. It is always easy with a definition of the rungs of the ladder and some examples. Products and services is anything that you could buy that would solve for the problem at hand. Features, the distinctive attributes or descriptions of the products. These attributes help to solve a problem. Functional benefit, how it helps someone in that moment overcome a specific problem. Ask yourself, why is this feature so important? Emotional benefit, the higher order desired state that comes from the problem being solved in that moment. It is usually the benefits and goals that sit on a higher level, something that someone's trying to achieve on a yearly basis. Ask yourself, why is solving this problem in this moment so important to their life? If you're looking for more emotional benefits, you can download my 24 consumer goals cheat sheet, which has a list of them in the comments about 30 minutes. So you could start the bottom of the benefit ladder with strawberries, divorce lawyers, impressionist paintings, headphones, or a cup of tea. Examples of top ladder rungs could be emotional benefits like tranquility, feeling relaxed, individuality, feeling unique, material gain, avoiding the loss of money, understanding, engaging in activity involving original thinking or novel or interesting ideas, belongingness, avoiding feeling of social isolation or rejection. Now answers. So have a go at writing it for strawberries to begin with. 
put it at the bottom of the rung and then try to write the rest of the ladder. So an answer for strawberry, the bottom rung would be strawberries or product and service. The feature is easy to transport, the functional benefit is perfect for a picnic and the emotional benefit is feelings of joy and well-being. A second ladder might be the product or service is strawberries, the feature is natural source of sweetness, the functional benefit is eat sweet foods that aren't bad for me and the emotional benefit is feeling healthy. The third ladder might be product or service is strawberries again. The features would be pick strawberries from the farm. Functional benefit is see that the food is all natural and the emotional benefit is connection with nature. Now let's look at an example of when you start at the top rung. Put at your top rung exploration, satisfying one's intrigue about meaningful events. So now some answers. So we might land on museums playing this role. So we would work out the rungs in between this. The emotional benefit of satisfying one's intrigue, meaningful events. The functional benefit is understand how past events impact today. The features is collection of artifacts that change the course of history. The product and service is museums. The second product or service might be a therapist. The emotional benefit of satisfying one's intrigue about meaningful events. The functional benefit would be help you untangle what is going on deep in your head. The features are trained professionals in human psychology and then the product and service is therapist. The third product or service might be a podcast. So the emotional benefit again is satisfying one's intrigue about meaningful events. Then the functional benefit is understand an issue from multiple perspectives. And then the features is in-depth interviews with experts. And then the product or service is podcast. Share advertising campaigns that you admire and then try and write the creative brief for that specific spot. It's important to practice writing the key documents of a strategist without the pressure of a real client. This also helps you see what the different briefs would look like for great work and how they differ from current briefs that you're writing. Find a campaign or advertising spot you like. Two, play the spot for all the strategists. Three, give them the format that you want them to respond in. E.g. your company's creative brief formula or the get who to buy formula. Step four, give them five minutes to work out what the brief is. And then five, discuss as a team which one was your favorite response. If you want an easier version of this, then you can also give the strategist the PR release too, as the client will talk about what the goals and the problems of the campaign are. If you're struggling for a campaigns to use, check out the Khan Line winners. If you need a refresher on how creative briefs are written, you can check out my free mini course that I have on creative brief writing. I think around 10 minutes per campaign to analyze. If you want an example of this exercise, check out my videos on creative brief rewinds for Cheetos, Extra Gum and Hinge. Share client briefs and see how strategists would go about diagnosing the brief and get strategists to write down what is missing from the brief. Why is it important? This improves your response time on looking at client briefs and working out the gaps that you have and information that you need to ask from the client. Give the team a client brief. Step two, give them five minutes to dissect the brief. Step three, get participants to report back what is missing from the brief. Step four, extra points for how they would ask for that information. It's important that you have structure for the output that you're creating. For example, having a strategy on a page as your final outputs makes it easier to understand what information is missing from the brief. If you do not have a company template for how to write a strategy on a page, then you can look at my video on the nested strategy on a page document here. If you want more examples of client briefs to practice on, you can also sign up to the Academy. Well, I think it's around 10 minutes per client brief. Opening five moves. What is it? Give strategists hypothetical situations and then get them to tell you what the first five moves that they would make 
after receiving this information. This helps get younger strategists who are used to taking orders to now start flexing their muscle in terms of making decisions. Role playing common scenarios that strategists find themselves in is important to practice to help them navigate those situations in future. If you're doing this in a group, you often find that they will get more information about how others would approach that same problem, which can be beneficial for other strategists in the room. One, you share the hypothetical situation with the strategist. Two, then ask them to write down the first five moves that they would make when they hear this information. Three, you would give them five minutes to write their response. Four, the team would then share how they would respond to this information. When you're writing out the hypothetical situation, make sure to give a time frame and a budget that they have to work with. Think about all the common questions that you get asked as a strategy leader and then respond to that. You're not expecting them to do the work, but you're actually expecting them to show you their process. The important thing is, is that everyone writes down their answers, but when it comes to sharing section, you wanna hear from the more senior members of the team as they have the most experience and junior strategists can learn from them. If you need more hypothetical situations, I have a bunch of them in 10 strategy exercises guide that you can use. It's about 15 minutes. This is depending on how many people you have in the group and how many people share. I hope you found that helpful. My name's Julian Cole and I'm a strategy trainer. If you're after the full list of 10 exercises, you can download them from the link in the comments. I'd love to hear if anyone else has strategy exercises you practice by yourself or with groups in the comments too.